In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to install ESXi version 8 using the interactive installation method. And I'll be demonstrating these tasks using my home lab that I've created on VMware Workstation. But although you'll see me installing ESXi 8 on a virtual machine in my lab environment, you can follow the same process to install ESXi on a physical host. And so I'll get started by creating a new virtual machine here in VMware Workstation. And I'm going to do a custom configuration here. And I'll click Next here at the first option. And here you can see I can choose an ISO image. And as you can see, I've done this a few times before here in this lab environment. I've got a few ISO images from past versions of vSphere. I am going to browse and what I need to do is find my ISO image for ESXi version 8. And if you're used to physical computers, this is kind of like putting a CD or a DVD or any kind of bootable media into that computer. I'm going to use the ISO image to boot this new virtual machine and install ESXi version 8. So I'll just click on browse here. And here you can see I found the ISO image for ESXi 7. So I'll just go ahead and click open here. So now I'll just go ahead and click on next here. And I'm going to choose my operating system. And in this case, my operating system is going to be ESXi 7 and later because this is ESXi 8. So I'll just choose ESXi 7 or later for the operating system. And I'll name my virtual machine. And I'm just going to name this virtual machine ESXi01. And of course, some of these tasks are unique to running ESXi on a virtual machine. If I have a physical server, I won't have to name it, right? So I'm going to name this virtual machine ESXi01. And as you can see here, I've changed the directory where the virtual disks for this VM are going to be stored. So I'll just go ahead and click on next here. And now I'm going to choose the number of processors and the number of cores per socket and the amount of memory that this virtual machine is going to be granted. Now again, if you have a physical server, it'll just have whatever it has. You don't have to do this. But if you're working in a lab environment where you're running ESXi on top of a virtual machine, you'll have to configure these options. And at the moment, I'm not going to choose a network connection. I'll have to go back and add that later on. But for the moment, we're going to skip that, even though we will have to go back and add it a little bit later on. So I'll go ahead and hit next here. And I'll just go through the next couple of options here. And what we're basically doing is putting together the hardware that makes up this ESXi host. So I'm choosing, you know, how big is the virtual disk going to be? How much memory is it going to get? How many CPUs is it going to have access to? And I haven't actually started installing ESXi yet. So I'm just basically putting together the hardware. And so now I'm done with that. I'll go ahead and hit finish. And I'm not going to power on this new virtual machine just yet. Before I do that, I'm going to right click it. I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to set up my network adapter. So I am going to add a network adapter here. And this is basically like you would think of a physical VM neck. This is a network adapter for this ESXi host. And I'm going to pick which network I want to connect it to. And I'll just go ahead and hit OK here. You have to have a network adapter. It's a requirement of ESXi. And so now that everything is set up now that all my hardware is basically put together at this point. Now I'm going to power on my ESXi host. And don't forget, I have an ISO image associated with this virtual machine. So as the virtual machine boots, it should boot from the ISO image, which is my ESXi installer. And if I was working with a physical server, that's basically the equivalent of me having a CD or a DVD or a USB device that my physical server is booting from. Well, I'm using an ISO image here to boot the virtual machine from. And so now it's going to load the ESXi installer and go through the installation process. 
and eventually it'll get to a point where I can do some of the basic configuration of my ESXi host, but we're not quite there yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause my recording for a moment. Okay, and so now we can see that the boot process is complete and we're ready to begin the installation wizard here. So I'll just hit enter to continue and I'll hit F11 to accept the licensing agreement here. Now I'll choose a disk to install ESXi on and whatever disk I select here is, is going to be formatted with the VMFS5 file system. And you'll notice here that this particular storage device does not have a star next to it. That's because it has not already been formatted with VMFS. If I see stars next to partitions, I need to be cautious with those because those have already been formatted with VMFS and they may contain virtual machine files, virtual machine disks, things like that on them. So I want to proceed with caution if I see a star there. But in this case, it's a virtual machine and it's only got one virtual disk. So I'm just going to hit enter to continue here. And I'm going to choose the US default keyboard layout. Now I'll have to put in a root password for the ESXi host. So I'll just put my password in and then I'll put it in again to confirm it. And I'll hit enter. And it's basically just warning me that ESXi is going to be installed on the disk that I specified, that the disk will be repartitioned. Basically everything on the disk is going to be destroyed. And I'll just go ahead and hit F11 to confirm and begin the installation process. And this part will take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause my recording. And now we can see that the installation has been successfully completed. So now's the time to remove any installation media that might contain those ISO images. Uh, if you have a, a CD or a DVD that you're using in your physical server, it's time to remove that now. And for my VMware Workstation virtual machine, I'm going to have to disconnect it from that ISO image so that when I reboot this thing, it'll reboot into ESXi. It won't boot using the installation media again. So here you can see that we have this CD DVD that's going to be connected at power on. I'm going to change that. I'm going to deselect connect at power on. And that way, when this reboots, it won't go through the ESXi installation process again. So I'll just hit enter here and allow it to reboot. And I'll pause my recording while it reboots. Okay, so now my boot process is complete. I'm just going to hit F2 to go ahead and log in with the root credentials that I've configured. So here I am in the direct console user interface or the DCUI. And the DCUI is used for some very basic administration tasks for my ESXi host. This is not where I'm going to do things like create and modify virtual machines. You know, this is not where I'm going to set up vCenter features and things like that. This is for the very basic tasks that are required for me to get ESXi up and running. Things like configuring the management network or configuring the keyboard layout or accessing the shell. These are the sorts of things that we can do from the DCUI. So this is not an interface that I'm going to use for my day to day management. This is an interface that I'm going to do for my initial setup. So let's start by going to configure management network. And you can see here I have a single VM deck. I have one single physical Ethernet adapter on this host. And I can also configure VLAN settings. So if I want to specify a particular VLAN here, well, I can do that. I'm not going to do that though. But what I am going to do is go to the IP version 4 configuration. And right now it's set up to use a dynamic IP. I'm going to just use the arrow key to, to go down and I'll use the space bar to select set a static IP version 4 address. So I want to manually configure the IP address on this ESXi host. 
And so the address that we specify here is going to be used for the management VM kernel port. And so what I need to do is configure an IP address that can be used by this ESXi host to communicate with vCenter. That's what the management VM kernel port is primarily for. It's to allow this ESXi host to communicate with the vCenter server appliance. And it may also need to communicate with systems on other networks and therefore we will need to go ahead and put in a default gateway configuration as well. So I'm going to put in the correct default gateway here for my ESXi host to use and I'll just click enter to accept this configuration. And then next I'm going to change my DNS configuration as well. And I'm going to set up my DNS server here. And so again, I don't want to use what was automatically configured by DHCP. I know what the address of my DNS server is, and I'm going to go ahead and configure that option here. And then I'll just hit enter to accept that new configuration. So now I've configured all of my network settings the way that I want them to be configured here, and everything's set up exactly the way I want. So I'm just going to click escape to exit out of this. And it's going to ask me, do I actually want to apply these changes and restart the management network? So I'll go ahead and hit Y for yes here and allow it to make those changes. And there we go. And so now I could do some tests to make sure that my management network is actually working. And one of the things that we can do from a diagnostic perspective is we can restart the management network. So if I've got some kind of network problem here and I think there's something wrong in the TCP IP stack of this ESXi host itself, I can always restart the management network here without restarting the entire host. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to test management network and here we can do some ping tests and you can see here it's automatically populating the default gateway and the DNS server for us here automatically it's going to send some pings to those and and make sure that they're actually responsive so let's go ahead and allow these ping tests to complete and see how they come back so this is the part of the process where, hey, now I've got the host all configured. I've got it configured with all the right network settings. And it's ideally at this point also connected to the physical network. And I've actually confirmed that it does have network connectivity. It's able to com communicate with my DNS server. There's probably something wrong with my default gateway. So I'm not really going to worry about that right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter here. And we've got some other options we could potentially utilize here. Like for example, I could configure my keyboard layout if I wanna change that. Um, there are some troubleshooting options that are kind of interesting here. We can do things like enable the ESXi shell and enable SSH. And so let's go into these troubleshooting options. You can see right now the ESXi shell is disabled. I can enable it and what this will allow me to do is actually launch a command prompt and issue commands to the ESXi host. And if I also enable SSH, then what I can now do is use an SSH client like PuTTY, for example, to connect to this ESXi host and manage it from the command line. I'm actually going to disable these now though because unless I need these enabled, I should keep them disabled. From a security perspective, ideally you should be keeping those things disabled. I can also restart the management agents on this ESXi host. Now, why would I do that? Well, let's say that for example, vCenter is having a hard time communicating with this ESXi host, but maybe I can ping vCenter from the host, but vCenter can't communicate with the host. Well, I could restart the management agents to get the host functioning again and to get it able to communicate with vCenter again. So I'm just going to escape out of troubleshooting mode here. I can also do things like see my system logs here as well. 
And if I wanna delve into those, I can do that here. There are ways that I can get those logs out of the vSphere client as well. And I can also view support information like serial numbers and information like that. That's good stuff if I'm working with VMware support, they may actually ask me to show them that. And then finally, I can reset the system configuration. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to wipe out all of the configuration that I've done of the ESXi host. It'll basically bring the host back to defaults. So if I do this, we will still have ESXi 8 installed, but it'll be completely set back to the default configuration settings.